Hey guys, Casual Chrono here. Now that I've finally beat Quadoxin for the Curio's Regret quest chain, I'm on the next boss, the EP7-227 Patel. Patel is located in the IDA school, L block. And you have to go up to the top of it to reach him, uh, the Sky Park area. So, I'm looking at the wiki right now. Patel has 360 million health, and it looks like he has a mechanic which has stacks of concentration, and each time he gets hit from an attack, including damage from pain or poison, he loses one stack. And the idea is to try and knock out as many stacks as possible. He has three HP stoppers, and otherwise is null to magic attacks. Knowing that he's null to magic attacks, that gives me an option. Uh, I can't really use the Alma team since she does magic damage. I could use Sesta, I could use Manalka, or I could use my Thunder team, Obero. I'm going to go ahead and try with Manalka first because Radius is uh, pretty much geared for survivability and that will maybe give me a little bit of time to kind of see the fight and figure out how it works because this is my first time attacking him it uh, I'm not really sure if they're hims or its or what but uh, I want to basically buy myself enough time to kind of figure out what's going on here and the best way to do that is to use radius all right, so I see a pig. All right, the pig is talking to me. All right, is the pig going to attack or... They're going to turn into some horrible creature. Okay, looks like the fight's beginning. Alright. Manalka is going to rip and tear because that's what Manalka does. We're going to drop Fire Stance. We're going to drop Pain Poison. And we're going to drop Overwhelm on the first turn to get that barrier up. So, let's see what this guy can do. Okay. Here's those and stacks. Okay. Down to six stacks, four stacks. So round one resulted in four stacks and he healed. Round two, He's, we're going to knock out more stacks. We're going to boost power. We're going to boost power. Actually, I think we're just going to go ahead and attack and start downing those stacks. And she's going to rip and tear. Now, it said that the boss had a 70% HP stopper. So I'm thinking rip and tear alone might drop him down to the HP stopper. So you might have a barrier or two. So Rip and Tear attacks twice while the boss is above 50% health. Since there's an HP stopper, that guarantees I'm going to attack six times total. I'm going to attack three more times. Oh no, sorry. Oh, one additional time. So that's seven. She doesn't have an attack, but her pain and poison will do two attacks. So that will be eight and nine. Prominence Purge will be 10, and then Tetra will attack 3 times, so that's 13 total t attacks this round. If I goes well. Fire Zone is awakened. And it looks like there's the HP Stopper. We got a revive going. Alright. So I was a break concentration. 
And I think we hit the first HP stuffer. Yes. Alright, we're gonna rip and tear again. We're gonna go ahead and search in blaze. We give Stas immunity and give Ify a shield. And does it still have rage? Yes, so we're gonna overwhelm. It's it looks over. like there's less stacks and we're hitting the second HP stopper. And there goes a revive as well. Down to two stacks. One stack. Actually, if that was pain and poison, that would have been both stacks. Alright, back up to nine stacks. We'll rip and tear. Attack. We'll go back to Rosa Liliac. And let's overwhelm again. And this should bring him down to the third HP stopper, which was like 1%. There's the third HP stopper. This one will kill Manalka, but she'll be revived. Take this. And between Tetra and the Pain Poison, that used up the rest of those stacks. So if I understand this right, he should die this turn. I think I've used up all of his HP stoppers. Oh, let's find out. Rip and tear. We'll attack again. Beef up again. And let's see, Overwhelm has three stacks. Let's do a Promise Purge just to reduce, just in case. There we go. Alright, that was a lot easier than Quidoxin, so the key was just basically to make sure you did a lot of attacks. Tetra was doing three, Pain and Poison were doing four and five, so right away, passively, I was knocking out five of those stacks every turn, so the rest of the team just had to knock out the remaining stacks. Alright, that one wasn't so bad. And my understanding is, once I complete the quest chain, I can go back and repeat these bosses. Because I know that was a pretty powerful team. Not everyone has Manalka, not everyone has uh, Alter Sukia. That said, uh, I used Aisha for a long time instead of Alter Sukia. Really the only difference is Aisha can't awaken the zone, but otherwise has pretty much the same attacks and buffs and debuffs. So if you don't have Alter Sukia, but you do have Aisha, who's a free character, feel free to swap Aisha in. But then again, not everyone has Radius, not everyone has Ify. Ify's revives definitely helped. Though Tetra, I could have stalled for a little while and used his revive, but the description seems to indicate that um, stalling for a very long time is not the best of ideas. Probably because of those stacks and everything. So... Anyway, well, uh, that was EPS 227 Patel, the team, really quick. Manalka, Elpis Sword, Dryad's Bangle, which improves critical strength damage. And she has, from Toto Theater World, a Power Plus Speed Halved Badge. Uh, I actually like this one because not only does it give her a ridiculous amount of power, it also pretty much guarantees that she goes last, which means the rest of the team can go ahead and place their buffs and debuffs before she moves. That way she gets the full benefit of buffs and so forth. Oh, uh, going back, uh, Grasta, she had the typical uh, pain setup, bullseye, MP consumption, and infernal power of pain, which improves pain and fire attacks. Sukia, she was more defensively minded. I gave her a lot of extra health for Manalka's beginning turn basically health sap. She had the Dryad Spear, mainly just for lack of a better weapon. She has the Subspace Bracelet, which gives health, and she has an HP badge, just a 500 one. Her Grasta also give health, MP Consumption with the Health Ore, HP Restore with a Health Ore, and MP Restore with an HP Ore. So 
That gave her a grand total of 6,000 health. Iffy, Purity Staff, Elpis Ring, which uh, Elpis Ring gives uh, health, and the Life Spring Badge, which gave her 1,000 health. It reduces her attack, but she did not have any attack skills, so that really didn't matter to me. Grasta wise, she had uh, staff related Grasta, so the first one really did not come into effect at all here. If you have Asia, then Asia would have done a little more damage. Sound Body, I was giving Iffy 300 more health. And she still has the Almighty Power Gun because she's also on my Alma team, and Alma's a gun user. So Iffy's Grasta really didn't matter in this fight aside from Sound Body. It gave her 4,800 health. Radius, Illusion Speed for health, Elpis Bangle for health, HP plus H and Speed halved badge. Her speed does not matter too much to me either because Prominence Purge is preemptive, so the only a, a thing that she did was overwhelm, which would have been later in the fight because of her speed. Uh, Grasta wise, all of her Grasta had 300 base health and they were all upgraded with the Light Shadow HP ore. One was Regen, one was MP Consumption, and the third one is HP Restore, um, which doesn't really matter because she's not usually in the background. I also have her Crimson Knight Proof for an extra 300 health. So she was rocking very close to 11,000 health, in part because of Aldo's Grasta. Aldo had the Robust Body Sword, so he was giving Radius and Minelka an extra 300 health. He was also letting them do more damage when they were at 80% health or below, and Fire-type attacks were going up by 30%. Violet's Grasta. Manalka is a glutton, and Violet is a glutton, so Manalka uh, was being buffed by Violet for an extra 25% damage. If by some miracle Manalka was actually at full health, she would do extra damage. Sometimes Tetra would put her at full health before she attacked, so in cases like that, this would come into play. And in the third one, I didn't really have a good third Grasta, so everyone has an extra 15% resistance to proficiency debuffs. So that was the team, sidekick-wise, Tetra and Karobo. Tetra for heals, Karobo because his aura takes effect with fire damage, and his aura means that Patel was at, uh, basically lost 25% power in elect the entire fight. So that was the team, that was Patel. That was much easier than stupid Quadoxin whom I will always call Stupid Quadoxin from this point forward, even in repeat fights. So, anyway, I hope this helps you, um, and I will attempt to do more variations of teams once I finish the quest chain and I can go back and repeat these bosses. Until I finish, I can't repeat them. There's nothing here to click on to repeat. So, anyway, Casual Chrono, signing out.